last but not least, uh, it's the um, a lady and gentleman uh, from a, a little village up there in a North uh, Arctic Circle in Sweden. And uh, we did a summit there last year, I think. Yeah, it was last year and early last year. Uh, and we, we really got in touch with them in Copenhagen when we met in the European conference um, two years ago. Uh, and today they're going to talk about the, uh, what the village can do with the resources. And uh, we're really glad to have them here. And we're looking forward to working with them again for next year. Uh, Evalena, uh, please welcome the stage. And welcome. Odin, welcome. Hi. Thank you for being here. Good to see you. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Well, uh, in Volrim, it's never about one person. So today we are two. Uh, but we're also the last session for today. So just to make sure that you're not uh, sleep when we are talking, just quick step up, everyone. Yeah. And uh, up with the hands. A big applaud because you are all change maker and we are here together. <laughs> and turn around to your uh, neighbor and uh, turn around to the people uh, on your back and uh, give them applaud too. Okay, so where is Volrim? Volrim is uh, high up north in the top of the north of Sweden. Uh, and you can see Bristol is somewhere more south. Uh, there's a very small village, and um, we belong to the Jokmok municipality, and it's around 0.2 persons per square kilometers. So we have a lot of space compared to Bristol. That's also a reason that we need to collaborate with each other to survive. Uh, so. We have learned a lot. Uh, in fact, there's more reindeers in Jokmok municipality than people. It's 5,000 people in the municipality and 30,000 reindeers. Uh, okay, so we have love to be a bunch of people here from Wollerim to talk uh, and share some examples with you, but we couldn't. So we will want to take you to Wollerim instead for a while. So please join to Wollerim. You want peace, you make peace within you. You want love, you be loving wherever you go. You want joy, you bring joy to all around. Stop pointing your finger at the butt to the face. It's time to take action and leave all the hate. Wake up, take off the blinders and see. Wake up now to reality. be true.
So, uh, this was uh, uh, several years ago, we did that short movie. It's a homemade video from the village. And the good work for the common good is continuous, so the number is a little bit higher now. So, we are around 800 inhabitants in the village. It's a small village. But it's around 60 small companies and 40 non-profit organizations. And eight of the companies are crowd-based. And you see some of the examples uh, in the movie, and I will talk a little bit more uh, about them. They are, no, uh, they are uh, companies that is not uh, going, it's not one company, it's many company and uh, organizations uh, with different boards. Uh, and they're not going, it's not one, one organization, top organization, because these have been um, coming out of uh, during a 15 years uh, time period. And why do we do this? Yeah, the businesses we're going to uh, look uh, closer to is, uh, uh, we call them village companies, but it's uh, actually a mix of uh, limited companies, economical associations, and they're independent businesses started from uh, real needs, different needs, but started from act from where you are and uh, develop there. And uh, these, uh, in number these community-based businesses where uh, also they are uh, having this shared intention. They are different businesses, different focus, but shared intention of reinvest uh, profit back into the business. So if you're a share owner here, you don't get anything in your pockets, but hopefully your children, your grandchildren will have a nice future in Wolverine. Right, so we are uh, from the company Lapland Wolverim, that is a community-based tourism organization that started because um, we had a small hotel, but there was nothing to book for our guests. So there was a grassroots initiative to package our everyday life, our genuine everyday life to offer to people that are coming to the village. And um, uh, the village have developed from zero to 50 different kind of activities and package during these eight, eight years. So it's a, it's a big work. And uh, it have been good. Uh, last uh, 2014, we was one of the top three worldwide uh, company for ecotourism based uh, uh, organization in terms of uh, sustainable innovations. One of the latest companies' uh, name is Arctic Circle Products, and uh, the start from this was to save the last farm in the municipality. Actually, there is no full-time farm uh, more north than this. And um, they have um, Swedish mountain cattle that is very nearly extincted. It's more tiger in the world than uh, Swedish mountain cattle. And uh, we also do some local cheese, handmade cheese. And in Wallerim area, it's a lot of forests. So it's very important with the open landscape. It's not so much open landscape. So that was the third thing to, to um, try to, to save. And this is an early startup right now, the Artisan Food House, that is a crowd-based company uh, that cooperate with many, many others to develop local food production. So that will be a house with a diary and a food shop and a cafe and a kitchen where people can come and develop new local food products. This is a 
youth project that was a three-year project to really taking care of the youth issues that was very successful. The village team actually is a company that uh, have teamwork as a business model. And here we have a, a fun example of crowdsourcing, uh, where we go out and invite villagers to uh, contribute with ice lanterns. And uh, we do it very quick, first part, Yeah, and it became a Guinness World Record, and it's also gaining the village, and today it pulls a lot of visitors to come and visit the village in the winter market. Uh, just short about experiences from uh, this village, uh, where uh, we will say it, there is nothing uh, special here. We have both have challenges, but also a few understanding of what, uh, what makes things work up. Uh, work very well. So related to challenges, uh, like most rural areas, I think they are experiencing uh, processes going against centralizing. We saw it related to the school, uh, lack of economical resources, uh, distances and things like that. Uh, also old mindsets, sorry, sorry, old mindsets can be a thing uh, in the way there. Uh, and I will say, in, our, in the work we have been doing in this uh, village, a majority of the village is people that can put on agendas to their side for uh, something better for the village and, and the common good there. And, but sometimes you will uh, experience resistance or people who don't want, yeah, it could be envy or whatever, uh, so one experience, don't focus on what's trying to stop, uh, either go in dialogue if it's not possible, uh, work, find a way of work around. Example, like mentioning here, we have experienced a few experience on slander campaign, anonym, anonymous people working against, but a majority, when going, when a majority is going for the best, everything is possible, and focus on that. That works. Uh, yes, and uh, we also have a challenge. The next step, we want to go out digital. This has been organic crowdsourcing. What we have seen most in Wallerim, going local, and crowdfunding local, equity based. And but next step is coming. So what works in this, and uh, like many have speaked about earlier today, trust is important. And I think trust is also about a choice we as individuals can do in ourselves. Trust yourself and trust others. And uh, 
also see everybody is has something to contribute with. We have keys, we, we never know what key or fellow has, but it may be the key you are missing to take the next step. So, and uh, no hierarchies. We all, all are equal as humans. So, um, and also important, have fun, connect, do together. And uh, this, what we are seeing here is nothing special. It can be done everywhere. And a few understandings and people can do it everywhere. Yeah? Yes, and uh, I think that one important thing is that you put all away your own agenda for the common good. And that was what I think Epi uh, experienced when you were uh, last year at the first Crowdsourcing Week Arctic Circle. And uh, then you can get articles like this. This was a big uh, rural newspaper in Sweden that say Obama and Levin, Levin was a Swedish president, uh, go to Volrim, there you find the future solutions. That was fun. <laughs> and we will just uh, uh, welcome you next March to the Arctic Circle for uh, uh, Crowdsourcing Week Arctic Circle. Thank you. Thank wow. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. A very inspiring awesome. conversation. Uh, maybe we can open like uh, two questions. Uh, yes, a gentleman right there. And anyone? Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rando and I'm from Estonia. We have about seven people per square kilometer. <laughs> uh, but uh, my question was, um, well, in your experience, um, this um, like commonly community owned businesses uh, is it something that works just because there is no other option there? Or could it be that because they're commonly owned, they could also work in, uh, I don't know, in a small community in Brussels, for instance, uh, within a big city where there are other commercial options, but uh, because of commonly owned, it could be popular? Or what do you think? Is it? Um... I think the, the reason they are on the way, like here, sometimes they decided as a limited company because it was decided as the best, sometimes as a cooperative or an economic association uh, with member. And uh, I don't think we have seen all the solution how ownership can be uh, distributed in the future, but uh, today it works like that and you can go broad in and in this village with 800 people. We saw, we, uh, we have an example from 150 share owners and down to about 40, 50 in some of these community based. And then, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it in Brussels and Estonia too. It's not hard, it's easy. All right, next one, <laughs> next question, anyone? No? Well, you're asking too many questions. It's okay, no, it's, <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> please. Are you, do you have a question for yourself? Again, I'm leaving the... Uh, no, no, please. Yes. And we have one. So, no. just to check if I get this straight. This is a village that is also a company. No, 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 no. No, it's a village that have many small companies and some of them is uh, owned by, uh, wide owned by, uh, like crowdsourced and owned by, for example, the hotel is owned by 150 uh, villagers. Our company, Lapland Volrim, is owned by 50 private persons, non-profit organizations and, and uh, companies together. And you, you extend that ownership to whoever wants to come in and right. add value to, right. the, to the... You can have shares in their companies too. <laughs> shares holders, so you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> let's have one more there and then we wrap, wrap up. Uh, lady, Just right at there? the back. Yes, yeah. Please. Uh, thanks for a great presentation. Um, <laughs> um, you said that you're in the top three of the ecotourism communities. I wonder what the other two were and uh, what they're doing. Okay, so um, it's a, like an um, Olympic Games competition every year, and the name of the competition is Tourist for Tomorrow. It's a world organization that organizes that every year. So we were one of the top three to 2014 and it's different categories. And the winner, was, um, the winner was a small village in Himalaya. Okay, great, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to seeing you next year. All right, yeah. Yeah. thank you, Eva. Thank you. Thank you. You all are welcome to Wallerim. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Some great, uh, thank you.
Good to see you. We had great experience. Oh, Unfortunately, I, I, I fell <laughs> sick on a day that I was supposed <laughs> to do my expedition with the, hus with the Huskies. And I was like, and also I missed the, uh, the Aurora lights, which was something that I'm looking forward for next year.